A game's initial difficulty is often divided players on whether it should be more accessible or more unforgiving. A more hardcore gamer might tell you to get good, while a more casual one might be intimidated by it and just look to something else instead. Originally, I was more of the casual gamer in this situation, but Sekido Shadow Stay Twice caused me to realize that I didn't suck at video games. It was that most video games suck at properly challenging players on their harder difficulties. Hey guys, Alex from Nothing Box TV here, back at it again with a very different kind of video essay on Sekido Shadow Stay Twice and why meaningful difficulty matters. Part 1, My Soulsborne Background. To preface this, I want to say that before Sekiro, I never really had played much of any of the other Soulsborne games. I certainly attempted to though. I had bought Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition years ago, and again and again I would reinstall, die a lot, and uninstall. This occurred about 4 or 5 times, and eventually I just stopped trying. I even bought Bloodborne used, and sure enough, 2 days later I was back for my refund. Please understand that I do not hate these games, and in fact, I wanted to play them so badly, I just didn't feel like I was getting good enough for them. I thought that these games were just not for me and that I would never enjoy difficult games the way others do. When Sekiro was first announced, I immediately fell in love with the feudal Japan setting and how refreshingly different it was compared to its Soulsborne brothers. I kept telling my wife multiple things like, Man, I'd love to play Sekiro. I just don't think I can handle it at all. So she later responded by buying it for my birthday and telling me that we're going to beat it together. And when we started playing, we were definitely right that Sekiro's difficulty is brutal in many aspects. But this game made me realize what every Soulsborne fan was telling me from day one. It isn't insanely difficult to torment you, it's to refine your skills as a player, and without that, you wouldn't learn anything at all. Sekiro caused me to realize why I played most games on normal or easy, and yeah, I'll definitely admit it. Part of it is certainly because I didn't feel like challenging myself, but I also felt that harder difficulty modes in most games are an obvious afterthought. I didn't feel like I was learning by playing Halo and Legendary and getting instantly headshotted by sniper jackals, or something like Veteran for Call of Duty or Crushing for Uncharted. I'm not saying those specific games fall into this afterthought category, but games with after the fact hard modes, in my opinion, usually dampen the experience and just add more frustration rather than it being a learning experience. Even though I prefer an easier experience most of the time, if Sekiro offered an easy mode, I wouldn't turn it on. Not out of embarrassment, but because the game has taught and rewarded me time and time again for struggling through it. At the time of writing this script, I am currently dying to false corrupted monk, and before that I was dying over and over to snake eyes. Admittedly, she did feel like a more unfair mini boss compared to others but I still felt like I learned how to get gooder, even while dying to her stupid musket thing over and over again. Or the infamous Chained Ogre, which I would argue is the first boss-ish mini-boss. The difficulty threshold for him is much, much higher than many final bosses in other games. If you're like me, you died many times to Chained Ogre, but once you finally killed him, that dopamine hit was worth the struggle. Part 2. Respect versus Difficulty the reason why I wanted to bring up this topic is because there's an online debate stirring up internet forums and YouTube videos. For those who haven't looked into it, some journalists are calling for From Software to respect players by adding an easy mode. While I disagree with these articles completely, I believe that something else needs to happen in terms of difficulty, and it isn't with Sekiro. Difficulty modes need to be more than just a last minute number adjustment just to be able to say you have extra difficulty modes. For example, as trivial as Skate 3's quality was to Skate 1 and 2, the game's hard mode was actually done correctly. You didn't need to score more points or meet extra requirements and missions. Instead, it took longer to reach maximum airtime, collision was less forgiving, and you had to be more precise in general. Sekiro's only mode, well, there's also a hard mode of all things, requires all of this and more from you. Not because it wants to torment you, but because Miyazaki believes you can overcome it. I also believe that the Soulsborne and Sekiro franchises have a more classic approach to its game design. It's more in line with games that are shorter but much more difficult, evening out the hours required to beat it. It's actually not an issue to ask for an easy mode for Sekiro. It's an issue to ask for a creator to fundamentally change the whole reason why it's created. I'm not offended that a game journalist used the slowdown mod to defeat the final boss. And in fact, it's kind of tempting to not want to cheese the game any time it gives me trouble. What really is the issue is that saying From Software is disrespecting its players by not being accommodating to as many people as possible just for the sake of being inclusive. No game is meant for everybody, and Sekiro is no exception. But an art piece will always be worse when the artist feels like they have to change their work because someone else says they should do so. Game developers and journalists should look towards these games as examples and not problems. Not because of its aneurysm inducing gameplay, but because it doesn't hold back on the player. Not only that, you don't have to give the player a stroke just to get your message across, you just have to be genuine. Just like how in Spec Ops The Line, it could have just been a generic third person Call of Duty-esque style game. It does appear that way, but instead it psychologically challenges the player with a bleak take on warfare and moral choices. Difficulty doesn't always have to be about how quickly or brutally the player can die. Puzzle games are the perfect example of this, where the obstacle usually isn't someone trying to kill you. There are examples of unfair difficulty spikes in all genres, 
such as rubber banding AI in racing games, NPCs with aimbot level precision in shooters, ridiculous level designs in platformers, unfair difficulties unavoidable. So why do people demand an easy mode for Sekiro? I believe it's because they believe that they cannot enjoy it as is, and that they feel unincluded because of it. Before I played Sekiro, I felt this to some extent. I didn't blame the game though, I blamed myself. But that's where meaningful difficulty comes into play. I know I won't be that guy in the Sekiro subreddit who just beat their New Game 7 Plus playthrough without dying or taking damage. I'm the guy on the subreddit who made the post about how they finally killed General Giobu. Giobu? It's Giobu, right? Are you Fuji... Fujiyama? And then countless deaths later, they finally killed Lady Butterfly, and so on. This game is like hiking to the peak of a mountain, not a stroll in the park. And I believe that Miyazaki also believes that. And in fact, that analogy is perfect because when my wife and I walk through a park, it's quite lovely and reinvigorating. But we've also peaked a mountain, and I can't speak for my wife, but there were points where I was just okay with, you know, dying. But the thing is, is that my wife was right. Getting to the top of that mountain was oh so worth it. But the thing is, is that that mountain isn't going to make itself more accessible to you. Sekido's difficulty isn't for everyone, and that's okay. Sekudo's gameplay works for me, but the other Soulsborne games certainly don't. I believe that if you have the desire to play a difficult game, play it the best you can, and if you aren't successful, that's okay too. For all I know, I may never beat Sekudo, but I'm certainly still enjoying the pain, at least as of right now. I plan on killing the Sword Saint eventually, but I know I still have many miles of that dang mountain left before I get there. But you know what? I'm proud with how far I've gotten in Sekudo, with minimal cheesing. Causing him to commit suicide by jumping off the cliff to a... A lot of cheesing. So where exactly am I going with all of this? The Soulsborne franchise and Sekiro are some of the most difficult games of the last few console generations, and some people either want it to be easier, or hardcore fans want those people to get good. So what should we do about it? Well, the answer is nothing, really. The topic is pretty much a meme at this point, and when Elden Ring comes out, it'll be the same story again and again. But from my personal experience, Dark Souls and Bloodborne were more difficult to me because I didn't care as much about those games. I find myself much more invested in Sekido because of its mechanics. I would rather be able to deflect often, rather than roll around like a cheese wheel until the boss gives me a window to attack. But despite all that, I know that many Soulsborne friends are having a hard time relearning how to play because it's so different. This could be all in my head, but I find that I'm better at a challenging game if I enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the Soulsborne games, but I enjoy Sekido. So Sekido feels easier to me. At least it feels more comprehensible. So instead of blaming the difficulty or even yourself, ask yourself if you'd truly enjoy the game as is. If you'd find that this game would be as fun at any difficulty, then get it. But if you'd want it to be easier or not as challenging, then I would pass on it. I know it's something I need to look into as well, because I bought Dark Souls after all and it wasn't for me. So to sum it all up, let's not blame the creators for creating experiences that may not be tailored to you. But let's also not make fun of people who don't want to get good, or may not want their gaming experiences to be total beatdowns until they see the credits. Instead, let's all enjoy the experiences that we wish to experience. This is Alex signing off. I'm gonna try to beat Crept Monk some more, probably cry, and then go play some Forza for some aftercare. I'll see you guys later. Stay hashtag blessed.